Welcome to Road to Abundance with Mike Shabbat, guys. Today I have Tara. Um, so she's a friend of mine. She's actually managing some stuff for me. Well, she has a company that manages it, Unruly. Probably heard of it. So thanks for joining me, Tara. A hundred percent. I'm Tara Electra, owner of Unruly Agency. And yeah, I manage a lot of talent on social media, including this beautiful man <laughs> that all the girls freak out about at the agency. So it's cool to be here. <laughs> awesome. So on the podcast, guys, we're going to talk about success, business, because obviously she's very successful. She's a woman, so she's going to inspire a lot of women. And she used to be spiritual. She's getting back into it. She's healthy. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about all that, what lead a woman like her to have a successful business and what's her tip, advice. And yeah, just tell me a little bit your story, where you come from, and how did you build the company? Like what led to Unruly? A hundred percent. Yeah. So um, I grew up in like a middle class family. Um obviously went to school and all that type of stuff. I actually got held back in second grade, which was like a heart-wrenching thing for me that, you know, <laughs> always now looking back has brought me, I think, for sure to the place I am because it made me feel like I had a setback in life, which made me feel like I always had to prove myself that I was smart enough, I was good enough. So I was that much more hungry to like prove it to everyone but like myself. So yeah, so that's kind of always made me super hungry to become more and more and more. Um, when I was about 21, I heard The Secret, the movie. <laughs> and it's funny because that's what I would, it's so cliche. That's what a lot of people have heard that have helped them have more self-belief. Yeah. And yeah, I heard it when I was going through like a breakup when I was 21. And it like totally changed my mindset on the world. I was like, holy shit, why don't they teach you this stuff in school? Like, you know, it was just wild. And then I started doing a lot of self digging and spirituality. And from like 21 to 23, I went through a very spiritual phase. Um, but it really brought me to a place of believing like I can start my own business. So I what started my you, own business. You at pick the up time. the most from the movie, The Success or the book. Like, what did you apply that really made a change and you definitely love some stuff because you went into a very deep spiritual and now you're a little less and more balanced so mm -hmm. I call it like the ego spiritual like yeah. when you become a hundred percent and you're like oh I'm better than everyone and spiritual yeah, and then you true. tone it down to be more that's like true. normal that that's how that's the phase of it that's so true so, uh, <laughs> yeah tell me like <laughs> what, what did you pick up what made you like okay I want to be spiritual and now more balance yeah um, yeah, so when I first heard about it, I practiced it because it was like, and it's in the secret and in other teachings, it's like practice manifesting or law of attraction with small, easy things and then like grow your belief in it. So I did little things. Um, but one of the craziest things that ever happened, which a lot of people don't know this story, it's pretty <laughs> wild. Um, I made this little uh, tape where I like screenshotted a bunch of things I wanted. And then it was supposed to be like playing your movie life. And then I put a song over it and I would watch it all the time on this iPad. And I probably watched it for like maybe a month and I tried to like make it a routine every and night, then forgot about it. Um, in the mornings, probably. Okay. Yeah, just to like make me feel good and see all the things I want. Um, so I screenshotted like the car, the house. Like a vision board, but yeah. you made a movie. Yeah, but more of a movie with a song yeah. to make you feel good. Exactly. Um, and then uh, forgot about it. But one of the things I screenshotted was I just searched on the internet, hot guy. And then I screenshotted this like guy that was on a cover of something. And I was like, oh, I just want a hot boyfriend. <laughs> and then uh, fast forward like a year later, Met this guy out. Um, he asked me on a date. We sat down on the first date. He's like, do you believe in law of attraction? And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> like, I've been wanting someone that believed in law of attraction and, like, you know, your mindset and stuff. And then we started dating. Long story short, we dated for, like, six months, broke up, and just because we— there was things missing in the relationship. But fast forward, my uh, stepdad bought me a new iPad, and he's like— and I was like, oh, let me um, give away my old one. So I, like, was wiping the drive. Mm -hmm. And I f looked at that movie, and it was him. And I literally manifested this specific guy, and I didn't even realize Amazing. it was um, actually him. So that, that's when I believed it. Let me tell you a funny story about uh, meditation. So, guys, if you're not familiar with spirituality and yeah. manifestation, uh, what Tara did, basically, it's still 
it's still valuable to make the movie. Yeah. It's still valuable to listen it morning and night because that's when your subconscious mind is more suggestible to IVs. Yeah. The only thing and mistake that people do that Tara did back then is um, especially for love. It's one of the, the, the most complicated thing to attract because she put just the image, guys. But she forgot the emotion and the quality of the person she wanted exactly. to attract. That's why it didn't work. So she did manifest the man that she wanted, but not what, um, like, the rest of the men. She was just physical. It's so true. Yeah. Yeah, they always say, like, if you're trying to, like, make that person yours, you're forgetting all the other things. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's like, I want someone that also, it, you know has an abundant mindset, mm -hmm. who's a loving person, who's loyal, yeah. who has a connection. Like, there's so much more. <laughs> yeah. So. so same thing if you want to attract a house or stuff. You have to... What she did really good that I hear is she attached feeling, which is the song, the yeah. emotion. And if you want to attract... Like, now you have a beautiful house. Probably you were thinking about how, you, how this house is going to make you feel when you have it and yeah. stuff like that. So you link emotion to attraction. That's when you really want. And people often want to attract money, which in the secret... That's when I was stupid when I was young. I was like trying to do this. You know, they say that you write yourself a check. It's like, I want I a million dollars. But it doesn't work because you don't yeah. really want the million dollar because you're like, what are you going to do with it? And then yeah. you buy stupid stuff or whatever. You don't really going to feel fulfilled with the money. Yeah. So that's why you can't attract it because you attract it out of ego and neediness instead of yeah. now you attract it with pure emotion, love, joy, and so this true. is how you manifest. So I let you continue from there. You transfer the stuff in the iPad and then was the rest of the journey? Yeah, I mean, that was just, there was just a few key moments in my life that just like really ingrained it. Like this shit is real. Like if you actually <laughs> like believe something and like the, the main thing is believe, but then let it go. Yeah. You know, because it's not like I was, like, thinking of this person, like, mm -hmm. studying his face every day. Like, otherwise, I probably would have recognized <laughs> it was him. Yeah. But, like, I was kind of, like, nonchalant about it. You know, I wasn't mm -hmm. like it had to be exactly him. But the fact that it did attract him was yeah. pretty wild. So, yeah, since then, it's exactly that. Like, you keep learning more about spirituality and what it really means. And, um, yeah, and you get to a place where, like you said, it's more so just, um, I don't know keeping an open mindset to like what it is that you actually want, but why you want it. So that way exactly. you can focus on the why. Yeah, I think that's best. And then uh, what did you do before Unruly? Was it successful? And then um, how did it become Unruly? And now we know, well, I know, maybe the others is a no, but it's a very successful company. Uh, yeah. You also have Behave and yeah. you have tons of other projects that be, it's coming soon. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so. Yeah, so when I got into the whole spirituality stuff, I realized that I want to start my own business. Before that, I worked with, um, I started working for the startup. And at the startup, they were always like, you know, getting super excited and like, um, about like l different goals and benchmarks they hit for the company. And I just felt like soul sucked. I was like, oh, I want to have my own company. Like I just <laughs> didn't want to, I just always knew I wanted to like be my own boss. Yeah. Um, so that's when I started my own company. I was like, I'm going to do it. I didn't know what it was going to be. All I knew was like, I just have to believe that I can do it. <laughs> I started the LLC and just started figuring it out. I, I loved social media. I've always been a part of social media. Um, I met my first influencer and started trying to figure out how to bring her brand deals, brought her a brand deal, and then from then just started growing my network. Um, I went to Insomniac, which is like the biggest events company around the world where they do like Rolling Loud, EDC, like tons of music festivals. Um, and I basically pitched them to let me do their first influencer campaign. So it's like hilarious now because I got paid like 1500 bucks and I brought them like 60 to 70 million in audiences across social media. <laughs> I got them tons and tons of views, like hundreds of millions of views across social media. Yeah. It's like a huge campaign. Like years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When yeah. social media, like influencer stuff was yeah. just the beginning. Now yeah. we know we're thousands of dollars, but we got crook back then. <laughs> exactly. And so I brought like Tana, um, Mojo out, Christina Million, um, so many influencers out back then. And it kind of like 
prove to them what I can do. And then I started, once I did that, I started building case studies and pitching myself to all these other festivals and building experiences for talent. And my network just grew and grew and grew. Uh, So that was with my own company, Electric Mind. Um, And then from there, I just started building ways to monetize around talent in every aspect of social media, whether it was building a brand around the talent, um, doing giveaways, uh, obviously, <laughs> like uh, app downloads, all, I mean, any way you can monetize, I've been a part of. That's cool. <laughs> and what, what do you think was the main, the few main thing or main factor or habits that you have that made you successful? Because a lot of people tried it, a lot of people are going to try it. And I mean, there's other agency that that tried to do what Unruly is doing and stuff like that. So yeah. what's your business mindset, business habit through this time that you think this is it, this made me like successful? I feel like during like looking at social media, especially if like you even as an influencer and you also know business, you see a lot of trends and you're like, oh, shoot, that was so easy. I could have done that, you know? <laughs> and so all throughout my career of being in the social media world, I'm like, oh, I have everything. I could have done that. But I might have been like a little too after the wave. And then I'm like trying to figure it out and build it now while there was already people that were successful doing it. So I saw that really quickly in e-commerce or like drop shipping. Like if you got, if you knew drop shipping back in the day and you put an influencer as a part of it and it was on the, on demand, you made millions of dollars, you know? And I was like right after that wave, trying to figure it out, put it, put together a team (laughs) um, and did some of the stuff with that. So, Now, looking back, I feel like I was just perfect timing for Unruly Agency, where we really just saw um, the only fan space, the only fan space and driving traffic to paywalls. And we were just at the perfect time. It was like me and my business partner coming together, both equal opposite strengths. And I already had all this talent that I've been building relationships with for so long. So it was just perfect timing, I feel. Yeah, but you were ready, like you manifested it. And this time, maybe you didn't hesitate, which prior, maybe you were like scared to start or something like before. If you miss the trend, it's sometime because you don't go Yeah, like you hold yourself and then you're like, ah, could have done it. Mm -hmm. But this time you just jumped in it. So you just took action. It's weird. This time I didn't think it was going to be what it was going to (laughs) be. That was like the difference between all the other times I was like. I had this vision of what it was going to be with Unruly. I was like, I remember Nick texting me different names, my business partner texting me different names for the company. And I was like, you know, I was like, oh, for sure, Unruly. But I also, even when I was picking it, didn't really think much about it. Like, I didn't even imagine it becoming as big as it is. So I wasn't as like making sure all the boxes were checked to make this like a huge brand. And then when I saw it scaling, I envisioned it so much bigger. And it's exactly what I want to build it into was what I wanted to do prior with Electric Mind, but now I have way more opportunities to do it. So That's yeah. cool. So kind of Electric Mind, um, it, not, it didn't fail, but you just turned it like you, you closed it. And then this led to Unruly because of all the connection that you made in the past. Yeah. So I basically took the best things about Electric Mind and then implemented it into Unruly. So um, with Electric Mind, we did a bunch of content experiences community around talent and talent love talent does love to feel like a part of something because I really see with a lot of influencers they feel like on their own ship and they also feel like they're in competition with a lot of other people and they're all still trying to figure out what to do next yeah they all feel the same way and so I was like if you guys could just talk together or come together like you guys are all able to support each other yeah and it's just wild because I see it so often it's like the biggest brands on social media are utilizing the influencers and making billions of dollars because they get all the influencers to promote one thing and then the influencers separate themselves on little islands and promote their own thing and if they all come together and figure out how ways to like build synergy or um, drive traffic to each other or promote each other and come together like they could be the ones with like billion dollar businesses you know the women do it better I find like that's the thing as a male in the industry for eight years yeah um, male has more ego yeah which I had a lot back then and I still wanted to collab with men's, but you're scared that they take your success. And as you said, it's the opposite. Like working together is going to make you more successful, both Mm -hmm. of you. And I see it a lot in women. They always do share for share. They work together. They do collab. And for guys, it's always harder. It's like, like clashing. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's interesting because 
yes and no because some girls are cool. I've seen all different types. <laughs> but some girls that are big, they don't want to share either. Yeah. And I've seen that a lot too because they'll just be like, no, I'm at a place now where I'm bigger than all of them and I just want to have my own brands and my own things. But they really would be so much more successful if they mm -hmm. had the other talent come a part <clears throat> of what they were doing still. Yeah. Because you can only be as big as yourself, you know? Exactly. And a funny story one guy told me one day is, well, you never know who's going to be the next one. So some people that now, you know, when like Jen Settler or, or a girl like that, yeah. I look, they have six million followers. Their engagement is not good anymore. It's the engagement yeah. of a girl with 600,000 of new followers, TikTok yeah. and stuff. So. Those girls sometimes, I, I don't know this girl personally, I'm just giving an example, but those people, like, they're big now, but you don't know in two years from now, like, all the exactly. new TikTok crew, they're so big, and they were nobody a year and a half ago, so. 100%. There was a friend of mine, he had, like, six million followers on YouTube, he was big, he was the shit, and a guy wanted to collab, a smaller guy, and he just said no, and now this guy has 10 million, and him is irrelevant. all the time. And, like, <laughs> if only he had collab, then the other guy wants to have him part of his stuff. Exactly. So you never know, like... I like to collab. I like to share. Like, it's cool if you if you have a good vibe with the person. I don't say collab with everyone, but if yeah. you have a good vibe, like Harry, we have a cool vibe. Yeah. Um. So yeah, guys, that you share this vibe, you should collab for sure. A hundred percent. It's like finding like-minded people as you. You know, they always yeah. say that to do that in business. Why wouldn't you do it in the social media world? Yeah, exactly. You know? Find like be around other people that are wanting the same things as you, and you'll get it too. <laughs> you know. Um. I wanted to ask, do you have a morning routine or a routine in your day that you do? If yes, tell me about it. Um, so I wake up, work out. Um, my sister journals a lot, so she's kind of inspired me to, again to journal in the morning. Journal dream or journal like what? Journal what to like journal? say how your day's going to go. Awesome. Yeah, so she always, she's the best too. So she always like re-motivates me. Me and my sister live together. So she'll be like, you know, I'm journaling exactly what my day is going to go like. And it works that day. So she'll say stuff to me like that. I'm like, you're right. I have to get back <laughs> on it. So I try to have that, a routine as much as I can. I used to be a lot better, but I'm happy I'm going to the gym. So that's good. <laughs> um, a lot of times when I come home, I'll journal my day. Because sometimes uh, I've realized in this company, working with so many females, that I am more of, like, an empath. I never thought I was, like, someone that takes on other people's yeah. emotions. So you need to clean it. It's very hard for me with some of the girls because I always have to talk to them, make them feel better, and I care so much, so I take yeah. on their feelings, and it's just, it's a lot. So I have to, like, write and say how it feels, yeah. and it's all okay, and, like, my day's going to go good. So I try to say how my day's going to go and... Even saying things like, my life is so easy, everything works yeah. out for me, like those types of things are just a belief to yourself that <clears throat> you actually go through your day feeling good. And you see a difference. Like, yeah. just so people know, that's one major thing. When you do it at the beginning, you, I remember you said, oh, you do small things that actually prove to yourself that yeah. it's working. Like manifesting a parking, manifesting money, manifesting this and that yeah. and then you gain confidence and you're like, wow, I can manifest whatever I want. And yeah. then life is going to test you and stop manifesting for you. But you just have to stay consistent with it. With it. But when you journal, you actually see it happen because yeah. you create that stuff. Yeah. Same thing with meditation. We are talking about it before and you say that you don't meditate as much anymore because sometimes you get caught up in work and stuff. But you did see a major change when you were doing 100%. it. hundred percent. Yeah, like even my stress levels go down, especially when you're working and you have so many things going on, you get stressed more easily. So when you meditate more, you're more calm with your mind. You allow yourself the mental capacity to like have things happen and not let it affect you so much because you're more like clear. Yeah. So you're like, oh, that's actually not that big of a deal, you yeah. know, rather than if you have so much going on in your mind because you didn't meditate, everything feels like a big deal. Exactly. <laughs> and you can you can do it. I remember like I was talking with um, someone very, very like spiritual. I have a shaman and stuff. And, that's cool. And uh, Eler and they were like. Oh, Mike, just do 10, 15 minutes through the day. Like yeah. once, if you feel overwhelmed and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and also, have you always trained? Like now you're LT, you, know, you do spiritual stuff. Like this all helped to have this lifestyle and successful business. Were you always LT or? Yeah, always. If anything, I worked out more before I had so much going on with our company. Um, 
But I feel like that was like my prepping stage almost. Like I was going on to <laughs> Runyon hike every single day. I went every day. And I looked at all the houses around Runyon and just imagined myself living there. And there's this house next door to my house that I would always just remember. And now I have a house there. Yeah. So uh, those are all the, t- the stages of like going to Runyon, imagining my life, um, clearing my space, going in the right direction. Um, but... You know, all those times that were leading up to it, I it's hard not to have, like, not believe in yourself sometimes when you keep failing. So I definitely failed a shitload. And I have a lot of, like, you know, just parts of my journal where I'm like, am I ever going to be successful? Like, doubting myself. So, like, it's totally normal to have those things happen because I think a lot of times people feel like, you know, if they hear that you have to believe in yourself so much to have the things you want, then they start to worry that they're not going to have the things yeah. they want because they're not believing themselves enough, believing in themselves enough. But really, it's just about not giving up and constantly yeah. working and towards it. When you you want, 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 you're in the neediness uh, frequency, which is way lower than gratitude and stuff. So a cool thing that you were doing that you probably you probably know, but when you hike uh, or you do runyon, you're meditating because it's yeah. like a meditation that you're doing. So you're actually uh, elevating your frequency, and then you see that house that you manifested and all that stuff. So yeah. it's it's cool to see that you did all that even after failure to manifest the life that you wanted, which yeah. people don't realize. But we so all true. had failure, like. What was the one of the biggest failure that you thought at the time was a failure and that you're like grateful for it now? Um, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us oh, like a there's few. There's so many. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's just a lot of times I was like, uh, I, I've <clears throat> always, obviously as a female, I've gotten into business with mostly males. Um, and so... I've always been the person that's a super giver. Like I give all my contacts, give all my resources, constantly bring opportunities. And so sometimes I've gotten like used in the past from different male figures to be like, okay, thank you. It's mine now. And like build their own things. And so yeah. that that's was a LA. big learning lesson for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's that is LA, LA vibe. It, a lot. It happened somewhere else, but I, I, I traveled the world and I, I'm from Canada and it's fuck LA is, is a rough city. It is. Yeah. It's wild. It's it's wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just learning to like invest into myself is like a good thing that I learned and like putting myself first and making sure like I speak up when I notice something that I don't feel like is right. Um, that's that's something I've definitely learned because those things would come up like, oh, this doesn't feel right. They're just taking that person yeah. or taking that business. You didn't listen business. to your gut feeling. Exactly. Which now you're more in tune. Yeah. Now you listen to it. So now that's I mentioned like little things, no matter how small they are, just to address them and then yeah, move forward. That's good. So that's that, good. That's how you should do it. Yeah. Let me check. Um, so if you would have an advice for people at home uh, or like any woman that's listening that want to be successful, because as you said, it's, it's also hard for women. I, yeah. I know successful women and you get hit on. Guys want to fuck you. Like. It's it's yeah. even harder, I guess. Well, I think well, you, you just invented. need to look at it differently. Yeah, because yeah, I, I hear that with female like entrepreneurs. They're always like, you should use it. Yeah, they always say like it's so hard to be a female in business. I've never went into it thinking that ever. Like I just was in a very male dominant world, so I definitely have to like prove that I'm smart and that you need to respect me and like but I feel like what's cool about it is like as a female you can use it to your advantage because people actually have their guard down with you initially because they're just like oh this is a girl yeah like is she even oh that's great that she's trying to do business like you know so but it's fine because the moment I'm in the door and I start speaking about the things they know they're always like oh wow you know so I'm able to get in the room make a lot of connections and I feel like if you use being a female to your advantage it's also a great thing yeah yeah feminine energy is always good yeah it's a good mix I mean you have a good combo with male and female at the, yeah. at the end of the company. It's always good. Um, <clears throat> what's your favorite quote or mantra that you live by, like, that you would, if you think about one right now? Hmm. I have a few, like, reminders on my phone that Tell go me. off every day. I have to go get my phone. Okay, grab your phone. <laughs> okay. So that's stuff that pops every day to remind you. That's yeah. very interesting. I like it. Yeah, Tell, I put Tell it on me my what, what's on it. So um, money flows easily and effortlessly to me. I have multiple streams of revenue. 
I am happy, relaxed, and financially secure because that's like my goals. I just want to feel like relaxed, Mm -hmm. financially secure, able to work on anything I want to work on, not feel like I have to work, but I want to work. I'll never stop working because I love it and it's fulfilling, but I don't want to feel like I need to. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So those types of things I like put as reminders. That's good. So what's nice is that you link emotion and you're precise. You don't want only to be financially abundant you want to be you want it to be easy you want it to flow yeah. you want it to be nice so that's that's really cool like yeah it's the best advice you can give to people yeah and it's like we, we call it incantation i think in english that that's what it is it's like you remind yourself every day so you yeah. read it out loud yeah a hundred percent yeah and then i will go off in between my day if i'm like working on something and then i'll remind myself so you're like, still spiritual yeah like all that is spirituality <laughs> yeah like, we're talking guys before the podcast you're like i'm not that spiritual anymore but this is all very very spiritual like, yeah it's true you're not crazy spiritual like or ego spiritual you're just applying now and yeah you probably even when you go in nature and stuff you probably reconnect and then 100%. you manifest and yeah. you meditate yeah that's good and um what what would be the, your best time management advice for people that want to get into business? Like some people think that they need to work hard. That's why we hear all the time, work yeah. hard, 10x, this and that. But actually, when you combine it with manifestation, it's supposed to flow easily. You're supposed to attract everything. So what would be your time management uh, strategy and not to waste your time? Yeah. Hmm. It's changed over like the last year for sure. So Tell me the change from where to what. Well, I used to, like, since I'm in, like, the social media space and entertainment space, it's so Mm fast-paced. So there's so many, like, new people coming up and new people to meet and, like, new businesses happening. And so a lot of that always felt like I needed to go out and network constantly. (laughs) And then over COVID, I realized I'm like, oh, shoot, it's so relieving. I could just take all the connections I have and just focus on building them now. And so now I just look at my, like... If I want to go out, it does make me not as motivated the next day. So I don't like that. I'm like, I want to, I, I'm picking and choosing when I'm going to do things more <laughs> strategically because I know it, how it could affect my day the next day. Um, so my management is more so like if something is important to me that is coming up, I'm not going to like go do things that I know are going to make me not feel as motivated yeah. or fatigued the next day. And we're talking about the fear of missing out and we both used to party when we were yeah. young and then people are like you don't drink anymore you don't do this i'm like no because i hate to being over it's not the party that i don't like it's yeah. the two day that i waste <laughs> after and they're like you're so healthy i'm like i don't even do for the health it's, it's just i feel like you i'm like i hate to waste my next day 100%. and be like i could be so productive but my brain is in the fog and i and, yeah. and also a lot of people get caught up into oh, i have to say yes because i need to to make contact or this or that but at the end of the day you're supposed to manifest them in your life and as you said you work on the one you have and you you don't need to go everywhere and be I, everywhere 100 percent. and i love that you just said that because i was starting to feel like no one is understanding me no nah, no nah, because I, I uh i stopped drinking for like a month and a half just recently um <laughs> and everywhere i went everyone was like how do you feel great Amazing. and everyone was like why are you doing it i don't get it like because i w- they thought i was only going to do a month and i was trying to explain i'm like it makes me not at- feel good the next day yeah. like i i feel <clears throat> way more on top of my s- shit and i'm like way more motivated i'm doing the things i want and i don't feel like i'm wasting my day yeah. so it's exactly what you Another just said feeling, it's weird because people feel they feel bad about themselves it's like why don't you eat cake why don't you drink alcohol i swear alcohol i didn't drink I don't drink for years. I drink wow. like it's that unruly party. I did drink because, yeah. but I plan it. Okay, this day I have nothing. The exactly next day I'm going to party. Exactly for something special. Yeah, I choose the event. Exactly. So let's say I'm go- I had my birthday friend in Miami. Then I got wasted and, yeah. and everything. I don't like I don't judge people, but yeah. if you drink all the time, you like sa- damage your body and then you don't feel on point. And then people, they always try to make you feel guilty and. It took a lot of, yeah. I don't care about what people think because they're going to be, oh, just a drink. Take a shot. Uh, it's like they want to force you. <laughs> like, oh, everybody gets shit faced. No, like, respect yeah. myself. Like Exactly. And That's at so one cool. point, I remember I say, oh, no, I'm, I used to be an alcoholic. And oh, shit, okay. And then they don't want to give you anymore. Just today. You know, when people were forcing it back then, I was like, oh, I used to be an alcoholic. Oh, it's good. Then they don't want to yeah. force it anymore. People are, like, almost 
benign to the idea that we're doing it for ourselves to always yeah. just be a better us. It's weird because people are only used to hearing, oh, I don't want to drink, shape. as if it's yeah. like, oh, you're not being fun, or like maybe you're an alcoholic, or you have a problem with drinking, or like you maybe act like a <laughs> bad version of yourself yeah. when you're drinking, and it's like none of that. It's, it's just so like bad. I'm not being my best me the next day, and I have a lot of things I want to do in my life, and I don't want to waste time. Yeah. And in the future, maybe I'll drink when I'm retired on a yacht yeah, one day. But the thing is... <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, we both done it. We know what it lead to, and exactly, we just feel way much better. Like yeah. I, I don't meet that many people that do it, and when people actually start doing it, they're like, "Wow, life is just so good. You're high on life." Yeah. And I was telling yeah, and and um, to a friend yesterday, it's like alcohol and drugs are 350 frequency. Most of people vibrate around 200. People that is gonna be high on life, they vibrate 400 and higher. So for yeah. us. Drinking and partying actually lower our frequency. That's why next day we feel like yeah. shit. People that are partying all the time are low, lower frequency. They get a high from the alcohol and then they go back. So they don't feel like they... they that makes so much more sense. They, Holy shit, you just blew my mind. Because I swear yeah. before, before I got super spiritual, <clears throat> I never noticed it. And then once I got spiritual, yeah. I was like, why is it making me feel way more down because than usual? Because it lower your energy. Now you vibrate high. So the thing is, yeah. the next day for us, if we're vibrating at 250, which is lower than the alcohol or whatever, yeah. we're like, oh, I'm used to 400, 500, whatever. Yeah, and then that's true. people that are 200, they just went from the alcohol to <laughs> normal. And they're like, no, it's a normal day. And, but for us, that's it's like you feel a major so difference. True. Yeah. Wow. It's just, you don't feel it. It's like there's a. A book, the, um, you probably have seen that in multiple of other books. It's like the scale of frequency. Yeah. You got to do love and, and stuff. Yeah. And power versus force is the guy that invented it. Oh, and wow. he talks about it, like that yeah. alcohol and all the frequency. Oh, I need to listen to that because I didn't. You love me, it. I swear my sister's probably like thinking right now she's in the other room. <laughs> like, oh, my God, that makes so much sense because we both were like, why now does it make us feel like a way lower vibration or more like just not our best version? Yeah. Even sometimes when I'll be out and then the moment I drink, I feel like a lower mm. vibration where yeah. it used to be like carefree yeah. and like fun. I'm like, that's not who I am anymore. It's so weird. Yeah, it's it's it's. I read so much book, and um, I read that specific book. Yeah. Oh my God, it was probably the hardest book in my life that I read because yeah. the way that the author phrased everything in English is not my first language, and yeah. he phrased everything to be perfectly correct for the the scale of frequency. And I'm like, fuck, this is so much word to mean nothing. Like yeah. a whole page to mean nothing. And I was like, yeah. I read a lot of book, and I was like, this is really hard. So, yeah. But my question about book, like what's your favorite book that you recommend people that you would say, or you can give two if you have two. Yeah. Um, what was it? Sorry, now I have to look. But I think it's Millionaire Mindset okay. is number one. Um, and then number what's the teaching in the book that you like? Like what? What's just teaching you that like a lot of the roots to like why you're not having money in your life or um, attracting like you know abundance is because of our mindset of things that have happened when we were younger. So like yeah. it subconscious just, mind yeah. still affect you. Yeah. So it just talks about like money is easy. There is yeah. so much money in the world. You know the people Society that are rich. Society teach us that it's not easy when exactly. you say hundred thousand or two hundred, but not necessarily in LA because it's a rich city. But everywhere else, they're like, oh, it's a lot of money. No, it's not. Everybody like everybody yeah. can make a million exactly. once you think because you yourself you think you worth that money that's why you make it exactly and if you start looking at the people that are successful and are making so much money and stop having a lack feeling or judgment yeah. towards them like start like being like fuck yeah that's it's awesome nice. they're doing yeah. that like I can be that like changing the way you look at other people that are successful or money that's happening and trying to just rewire where those things came from is a lot about that book and my mom has read it and her whole financial state has changed that's and cool. so I, I it didn't happen as quickly for me but I just yeah. constantly listen to it over and over again on an audiobook. So it's amazing. And then my <laughs> next one, but I haven't read it in so long, but it's so good, is The Voice of Knowledge. Oh, I didn't I didn't read neither of those books. Yeah. I'll have to buy it. The Voice of Knowledge is basically about how obviously since we were a little kid, we were we grew up hearing this is what you do to be, you know, a good boy and this is what you do to be a bad boy. This is what's pretty this is what's okay. ugly this and you're constantly wired from a little Being kid judged, yeah. like learning what's right and wrong constantly and so everyone's 
playing a different movie over their screen. Like I'm looking at yeah. you and based off what you're doing is coming from my past beliefs. Yeah. So I'm looking at you maybe judging something because of something I learned when yeah. I was younger. But That's everyone cool. has a different movie over their life. So I have a understanding YouTube video on that. Really? It's, um, one of the agreement of the four agreements is never the same take, author. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> ne never take anything personally. Yeah. Everybody has their own movie, and he talks about you going yeah. to theater, and you're yourself in the movie for the same dinner, then you're your mom and your dad, and you're like, this is not how I see this. It's not how I see my dad. Why Why my sister is not yeah. the same? And you, for the same exact room and things happening, we both see two very different <laughs> stuff based on how we, our subconscious mind, see it. Yeah, so cool. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Let me check what was the last question. Um. Yeah, I was going to say, like, when you feel unfocused or overwhelmed and stuff, like what's what do you do? What's your go-to? Unfocused. When I'm unfocused or overwhelmed, my go-to is a lot of times just going on a walk. I love walking. So like it's like a meditation. For yeah, you. Oh, I, yeah. Just being outdoors is my favorite. It just changes my mood, and just breathing in fresh air, and I think it releases endorphins and yeah, just makes you in a good. better place. Um, so going on a walk. A lot of times, like, journaling, um, just, I'm a really, like, I think a lot. Like, I, th I definitely am an overthinker and an overanalyzer. So you need to go back to meditation just exactly. to quiet that, that voice, <laughs> ego voice. Yeah, so that's how I, what I do to put myself in a better place. And what was the next question? It was, if I'm... Like, unfocused or, like, overwhelmed. Like Yeah, the, that's definitely yeah, it. That's what you do. That's cool. But, like... I really liked their chat. Like, there's a lot of things that you do that you probably didn't realize because you had a quick chat before and you were like, I'm not that spiritual anymore. Yeah, I'm it not makes that me LT. feel better after talking but to you. I'm like, there's a lot of things that you don't even realize that your subconscious mind is doing. And that's what I want people to understand is that you did a lot of things through the years that led up to the person that you are. And people it's often true. see, oh, this business. Like, yes, you said it's the right timing, but I don't think it's about timing it because I hear your story and it's like everything that you did led up to the woman that you are yeah and you just manifested everything and you still do it even without noticing it that's why it's funny because you've yeah. been building those habits so, so it you becomes were like, normal yeah you were like oh, yeah, i don't even true. spiritual anymore but <laughs> i don't really drink i go on walks i meditate i journal i do this it's like yeah. everything like, and i have like on my i have two phones yeah, my work phone. phone has my whole like vision board on it yeah, so just my computer screen it. has it. You have the incantation <laughs> phrases in this. So you do a lot of things that yeah. are actually spiritual. It's because I'm not meditating as much as yeah, I like. Yeah, that's how you say it. I'm, I'm not, but yeah, yeah, but you meditate that your own way. You learned yeah. it. I know but that, that. That's what just proves what you're saying is that people could be hard on themselves when they know they should be spiritual because they're like, oh, I should be meditating. I yeah. should be this. So then we automatically label that we're not it. Exactly. But it's like, oh, we're doing it in different and ways. So that makes me feel Ed good. Eckhart Tolle always say that now he's so, you know who is Eckhart Tolle? Yeah. So guys, he's an author, The Power of Now, like other yeah. few books, A New Heart that I really like. And now him, he's like, oh, I just could walk to the grocery. I'm meditating while I walk because he's been doing it for so long. Yeah. So actually, there's a few things that you do without even noticing it that 100%. you're actually meditating through the day. Yeah. It's not because you sit, you don't sit like this to meditate <laughs> that you're not doing it. Yeah, 100%. So yeah, that was cool. Thank, yeah. Thanks for coming. Is there I was gonna anything say, you want to share? We need to mention that this isn't a beer after yeah, we're talking it's, about it's, not it's, drinking. It's, all, <laughs> it's water. <laughs> it's water. Dead liquid. <laughs> I thought it was a beer when he gave it to me. But yeah, is there anything you want to add or, or share like that you think about? Um... Just basically to, you know, in times of my life now, I look back and I think about all the times I doubted myself and I just sit and I'm like, wow, even when I was doubting myself at those times when I had my low points or even when I failed and didn't know if I could do it again or no matter what age you are, it's all about just getting up again and not giving up. And yeah. it sounds so cliche, but now looking back, I'm like, <laughs> you know, you have those highs where you believe in yourself yeah. and you're in a good place. And those are the times you start manifesting and looking at your vision board and creating what you want. But you're going to have those low times and then that's OK. Yeah. And so now looking back, I just want to tell, you know, people to just Don't constantly yeah. give up or constantly <laughs> not to give up. You. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I always say like it's like a video game. So basically you have level. Before for your character to which you're the character for to level, but yeah. the life is gonna test you to see if you're really ready and if if you really want it. So yeah. they're gonna throw stuff at you that things at the time that you were failing is breaking you, and you're yeah. like, 
I wish I would be successful in this. But you were this close. You know the picture that the guy pike and there's a diamond right next and then you exactly. stop and then the guy next like the thing is life is going to test you to see if you really want it and exactly through the year what you say is basically just keep going because life is going to throw a lot of stuff at you yeah and same thing for relationships sometimes uh somebody gonna like leave you or whatever just it wasn't meant to be and it's so hard and people have such a hard time and they feel yeah. miserable and they're like oh i love this but no it's like life is taking this away to give you something much better 100%. that you manifest. But until you beat that bus, which is to drop that person and or whatever business, like quit one business or whatever, yeah. you're never going to have the reward because life yeah. wants to know if you're ready. Yeah. So, yeah. It's cool. Uh, guys, you can check Unruly. <laughs> um, if you want to be part of the agency, just DM me. I'll get you in contact with that. 100%. Tara. <laughs> and um, you have any um, businesses that you want to put or you don't want to talk about it yet, the stuff coming? Just Unruly Agency. My name's Tara Electra. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> You're so amazing. You're doing so, so great. You. And I hope to continue to be a part of your journey. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> Bye.